I teach organic chemistry and the, the, the way the book is written really is very abstract and students always wonder really what the material that we teach has to do with them really. It does not seem very relevant. In reality though, organic chemistry is very different really. It's about really organic molecules and we are made up of molecules. So really it's about our lives really at a molecular level. So what I try to do in order to engage students really is to use case studies so they can actually see how some of the material that we teach is related to them. Uh, one concept that we teach that students find very difficult with is organic mechanisms and what it is they move electrons with arrows. After a while the question comes up every year, why do we have to know this? Why do we move arrows? What does it really mean? So I, I thought of, you know, there should be a different way of teaching mechanisms. What I found out, I was watching TV one day and I noticed there was a news item that acetaminophen is toxic and to the liver and I got to wondering why that was. And I, when I looked into it, I found out there was actually an organic mechanism that would explain that. So I got to working on a case study really where I could talk about liver toxicity of acetaminophen in a real life scenario and I know cats are particularly affected by acetaminophen. So I, I, I wrote a story really, you know, of a student whose cat, she gave the acetaminophen to her cat, the cat got very sick and she wondered why and she tried to figure that out. It's a, it's a very nice story and has a nice ending and I tried that out in class and student was very, very, very receptive and I've, you know, and I've modified it and in time, you know, it's gotten much better. And I wrote it up as an, as an article and I submitted it to the National Center for Case Studies and Sciences and they, they've published it on their website and they'll also publish it in the journal College Science Teaching. So instead of just lecturing and mechanism actually, what I have students now do is they take a real life scenario and they try to figure the organic mechanisms. One of the, 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 the the idea is really in, in the course, or the outcome should be that students should really use scientific evidence really. Some of it, you know, students tend to focus a lot on factual things really. But really the reason why they take classes such as these is that they can read literature, they can understand, apply it and come to their own conclusions. So this case is actually gives them, provides them that with that experience. So what I've done is I propose three different pathways that this toxicity can be explained by. And I have them write mechanisms for each pathway. Then I provide some evidence that I need to analyze in order to determine which was the pathway. So what I find in the beginning students would do, they'd look in the literature, they spend a lot of time looking for the right answer. Of course the answer doesn't exist in the literature. They have to figure it out. Then they come back and after a while and they analyze the evidence and in time, with some guidance, most of them are able to, to come up with the correct mechanism. They're very pleased, actually, they can do something actually new, as it were. It's not something that they learn, and they're just repeating back. But they can make a decision based on, on, on evidence. In real life, really, you know, what I always tell students that, when they get a job and they're in a profession, really, what folks are paying you for is to use the knowledge that you have to make decisions, really. In terms of not so much value in knowing facts as it were, because a lot of times you can read through information very quickly. But you know, how do you use that information to make a diagnosis, a come up with a nursing plan, or to respond to a scenario? So the value really of the knowledge is what how you use it, the new knowledge you gain. And case study actually gives them an opportunity to do that. What it does to is also develops their confidence. A lot of times I have students come in to me. And they're wanting to go on to senior college or professional school and they worry. You know, they said, you know, Professor, I'm not sure really whether I should do that, you know. Am I going to be able to compete when I go over there? And, and one of the things, how do you give them the confidence really? I mean, you can tell them you'll be okay. And so, but they actually, they do a scenario like, like a case study like this, it's peer reviewed and it's also used by senior colleges. Then in a sense, they're saying, okay, yeah, we can do the same work as other folks are doing. This is something new. I didn't look up this in a book. I didn't know the answer my book, but I was able to figure it on their own. So they kind of leave with some confidence, really. Yeah, nationally, organic chemistry has a very high dropout rate and high failure rate. I think that nationally is about the people who pass the course is about two-thirds. In my classes, 
the, the numbers tend to be higher. And I think one of the reasons because of the teaching style as it were, I, I tend not to use traditional lectures in every class. I tend to, to have more interactive exercises which include case studies. And I find students like that. And every, every, section, every semester actually, I have students actually come and ask me about case studies. They, I developed these case studies with a grant from BMCC, a Board of Manhattan Faculty Development Grant. So I'm very grateful to BMCC for the funding to develop the case studies. What I did though, I figured, okay, I'm teaching case studies, I'm just one person. So my impact, it is limited to the students I teach. So I think a more efficient way would be, you know, if I train out of people to write case studies, out of faculty. So what I've done, I applied for a CUNY faculty development grant, and we got the grant, and over the last academic year, we actually trained nine CUNY faculty to develop case studies. And each of the, the faculty actually developed a case study, and they used it in class. And then we all went to the CUNY Genet conference, and we made a presentation of the case study. And some of the faculty now are at the point of writing their own articles on case studies, and I'm helping them along in terms of reviewing it, critiquing it for them. So, I, you know, it's something that's spreading, I think, you know, we can do a little part. So if we find something works very well, more students benefit.